Welcome to the demonstration series on managing ICX using SmartZone for SmartZone Release 5.0 and ICX Firmware version 8.0.80. In this demonstration, I'll show you the capabilities of SmartZone to manage ICX switch configurations. This will include configuration backups, the viewing and comparing of switch configurations, and the ability to restore a configuration on a Ruckus ICX switch. So let's get started. Here we have the virtual SmartZone. I'm running the Essentials version here, but this functionality I'm going to show you is available in the high scale version as well. If you look down at the bottom in the System Info section, you see the version is 5.0.0.0.675. This is the first GA release of version 5.0 for SmartZone, and this is required to be able to do switch configurations uh, with ICX and ICX Manager. You'll see that apparent here by having this new tab over here, the Switches tab. So we'll go ahead and click on that and take a look at what we have in here. So right now I have one switch, it's a 7150. Uh, it is online and seen by SmartZone. This happens through a process where switches send out an active query trying to reach out to the SmartZone and allow it to manage it. This is done through either DHCP option 43 or manually configured by giving the IP address of the SmartZone controller. Now when you first get into this tab, none of the switches are selected, so you actually have to select your switch and by clicking on it and bringing up the information for your particular switch. Uh, so here's the Backup and Restore tab. This is the one we're looking at here. This allows you to restore configurations and look at configurations, but first thing you need to do if you want to use this is perform a backup. Now, one is scheduled uh, by default to create your first initial backup when your switch is discovered or when all of your backups that you've created are deleted. So if I were to delete all the backups that I have here, one would be scheduled to be run so that there is a backup configuration stored in SmartZone for my switch. But if I want to manually do a backup, uh, I'll do that here under the More tab. Now, you have to have your switch selected for this More tab to light up and for you to be able to do anything with it. And we'll hit the Config Backup. So I'll run that right now. It'll ask me for confirmation. I'll select Yes here that I do want to perform a backup. And it lets me know that the backup operation is triggered. Now, what this means is that the backup itself does not perform immediately. The backup performs on a schedule. Um, it's a five minute schedule that repeats every five minutes and a backup will be performed at that time. I happen to know mine happens right around the zero or five minute mark of uh, you know every hour. So this will be scheduled here to be run in a few. And so I'm gonna zoom this through in just a minute and we are going to come back when we have a successfully completed backup. And then I'll show you what we'll see both from smart zone side and the switch side uh, from the CLI. Okay, we should be able to take a look at this and look at this backup now. Uh, it does show a success, so notice now that the scheduled backup that was run has been deleted because now I have a manual backup of my switch configuration. Now when we have this configuration, we can click on it and notice all of these highlight. We can restore this configuration to a switch, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, we can view the configuration, we can download the configuration local to our computer, so it'll bring up a prompt to download it here or we can delete this configuration. Let's go ahead and take a look at the config view. So here we see the configuration of the switch. This is basically the show run. Uh, when, it does a, when it does a backup, it backs up the running configuration, not the saved configuration. So that's an important note for you. When you make a change on your ICX switch and you run a backup, you are going to be backing up the running configuration, not the configuration file. So just keep that in mind when you use this tool uh, on your ICX devices. So this is our ICX configuration. If you've looked at a show run, you've seen this before. Uh, you can see our smart zone configuration, our smart zone active list, where we've manually configured the smart zone controller as the one we want to allow to configure these switches. Uh, in part of this demonstration, I'm going to make some changes to this switch and show you how they impact this running configuration. So you'll see here I have interfaces 1 through 6 uh, that have no inline power configured, so there's no, Q, uh, there's no power over Ethernet configured on these interfaces. Uh, the other interfaces, it's a 12-port switch, are all at default level, so they're not going to show up here. So I'll go ahead and close this out, and let's jump over to my switch and take a look at what that looks like through the CLI. So over here at the switch, here I am at the console. Um, now we're going to just take a look. Uh, we'll do our show run and look at this output. This output should look exactly like what we just saw over there in the smart zone, and it does. We see interfaces 1 through 6 with no inline power and everything else at default levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick configuration change. So 
So I've just disabled interfaces two through six. I left one up because it's the one I'm talking to the switch through, or it's talking to SmartZone through actually. So I don't want to mess with that one, but I've just disabled interfaces 112 to 116. So we'll do a show run. And looking at our running config for these ports, uh, we'll see that they're now all disabled uh, and the no inline power still. So let's uh, exit out of here and let's take a look now at our show config. This is the saved configuration file. So I haven't saved this. I haven't done a write memory. So all I have here is just the no inline power. So those ports aren't disabled in the saved configuration, but they are disabled in the running configuration. So now let's jump back over to Smart Zone. So now I'm in Smart Zone. Uh, I'm looking at the switch. Now I can get in here right now and run another backup. And we'll take a look at the differences between those backups. So are we sure we want to back up? Yes, and that has been triggered and saved successfully. So this backup should run at right around 1420 up here. So looking at this clock. So I'm just going to speed up time here in this demonstration and get us there a little faster. I'll be back to you when the backup completes. Okay, we've passed our 420 mark and uh, we show in progress here. That's because this doesn't live update for us, but we'll do a refresh here and we'll see that that was a success. So we've successfully accomplished the backup. Um, this backup was done. We had one done at uh, 1413 down here and one done at 1418 down here. So we could just highlight this one switch and we can do a config view and look at the configuration, the new configuration that we did. I remember because it's copying the running configuration or we can select both of these and run a config diff. And this will show us differences between the two configurations. So as we scroll down here, uh, we'll see some differences in the configuration highlighted for us. So in the, most, in the most recent one, we see the ports are disabled and no inline power. And these just have the no inline power. So we see these differences in the running configuration uh, highlighted for us between what we've done differently and uh, what we had in the first time. So good information, you can compare configurations, you can look at changes you made. Uh, so when you do a backup, you're backing up the running configuration. Now another great feature is let's say we didn't want those ports disabled. Well, we could highlight this one, our first backup, and we can do a configuration restore. And that's another real easy process. Uh, we highlight the configuration file we want. We want the one with the earlier timestamp, the one at 1413. So that's earlier than the one on 1418. And we're gonna do a configuration restore. So this says, are you sure you want to do this and restore this to the backup? And we're going to say yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this configuration we saved, write it to the configuration file. That is the saved configuration file that it loads when the switch boots. It's not the running configuration. So when we're doing a restore, we're not changing the running configuration. We're changing the config file. So the config file will be changed. So that means the switch has to reboot for this change to take effect. So when you're doing a configuration restore, know that you have to reboot your switch to make the changes to it. So let's go ahead and say, okay, it's going to push that. Now we have to manually go out to the switch and we have to reboot it to make this, to make this happen. So actually we don't have to manually go to the switch. We can do it right here from smart zone. Uh, the switch is highlighted. We can press the reboot button. Now the reboot button, this is an important topic as well. The reboot button does not do a right mem before it does a reboot or it would defeat the purpose of this process, right? We just said the configuration restore takes an older configuration file, writes it to the config file so that on the next reboot, that file will be what's executed and what's configured on the switch. If this reboot button were to do a write mem, it would overwrite that configuration we just restored to it. So it would defeat the purpose. So this reboot button here will actually reboot the switch. It'll schedule a reboot. It'll set it to restart. And when the switch comes back up, the running configuration will be changed. So let's go back to the switch and watch what it's doing and we'll see it when it reboots. So watching a switch boot really isn't all that fun. So I have sped through that a little bit for us and had this uh, boot up for us in a little quicker time than it was for me sitting here watching it. But anyway, let's take a look at what we have here. So we'll get into enable mode, uh, take a look at our switch and we'll do a show run. So our show run, remember last time we looked at our show running config, uh, we had those ports disabled 
and they weren't operational, but we restored to the uh, configuration file the configuration that had those ports enabled. So right now when we look at ports 1 through 6, or 2 through 6 are the ones we changed, uh, we do not see them as disabled anymore. These ports are now re-enabled. Um, now we're also watching uh, it reconnect to Smart Zone and attaching itself and building those SSH uh, tunnels between the ICX switch and the Smart Zone. So the, as it's coming up, it's going to continue re-establishing that relationship with Smart Zone, and we can go take a look at it over here. So Smart Zone still sees the switch online. Uh, we can do a refresh here. And yep, switch is online, still uh, operational, everything's good. So that is configuration management uh, using the ICX manager in Smart Zone version 5.0. Uh, also keep in mind that the ICX switch has to be running at minimum version 8.0.80. It's the first version that supported this functionality of being able to be managed by Smart Zone using the ICX manager. Well, hopefully this uh, demonstration was valuable to you and provided you some insight into the features of the ICX manager related to backup and restore procedures on ICX switches. Uh, there are more demonstrations in this series, and hopefully you'll come back to view them in the future. Thank you very much.